Hello and welcome back to Make Money Guide. Many people think that business ventures are all about profits and it is true, but profit comes in just as a reward for the effort put into coming up with a good income generating system. And as a business owner, you owe it to not only yourself, but also to your customers to ensure that your business will still be around, that your business will be financially healthy in the long term and keep on being a merchant of value. Today, we're gonna to be talking about simple must do's to get ahead financially in business. Make Make sure that you stay to the end as you don't want to miss any of this information. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn notices on so you don't miss any valuable content. So how do you manage this income after it has been generated? This is both a difficult question and also a simple one. Difficult? Yes. Difficult as up to 90% of businesses don't make it to their 10th anniversary. Simple? Yes. Simple as there has been for eons existed practical wisdom for handling finances. The following six simple steps are doable, predictable ways of managing profits to ensure growth, prosperity and preparedness for any future happening. Number one, becoming a friend to financial institutions. Let us start with an area we find mostly neglected by business people and entrepreneurs alike, financial institutions. We do know finances are a crucial part of any entrepreneurial journey and any business that may want to grow. Several business owners and entrepreneurs, however, do not take the time to actively build real relationship sources of finances and capital. It is not only necessary, but also imperative that as an entrepreneur, you build a rapport with a trusted financial institution. Why? To help you advance your business objectives. When we talk about financial institutions, we are talking about banks, credit unions, SNLs, and investment clubs, among others. As an entrepreneur or business owner, it is advisable to be a member of at least one of these institutions in your locality. However, do not just throw caution to the wind in selection of a financial partner for your venture. You ought to evaluate how they operate and whether their vision is in line with your business goals, objectives, and ambitions. You may be asking yourself why there is a need to have a relationship with a financial institution. The following are the advantages of this. A. Access to funding. If you have been in business for a while, you know access to these funds is crucial. Having a good rapport with financial institutions helps you to get access to finances much more easily compared to if you not know any. Some financial institutions, such as SNLs and credit unions, offer some of the best going rates for loans that can be used to grow your business without much pressure to repay. Some small business lenders and SBA loans attract as low as 3% interest, which is very fair. B. Networking. Financial institutions, more often than not, bring together like-minded individuals. Being associated with one can help you network with people that can help you take your business to the next level. It's not rare to hear entrepreneurs saying that they met via credit unions, SNLs or banks that they both transacted with. C. Advice. Nowadays, SMEs have been identified as a key tool for driving economic growth, as thus, many financial institutions are coming up with tools that are aimed at neutering SMEs. These tools include seminars, training, and other support materials. They can help you as an entrepreneur to grow if you take the time to build a relationship with financial institutions. One thing you need to keep in mind as an entrepreneur, the size of your business doesn't matter, so build up that relationship savings early on. 2. Saving. Saving is a noble skill that many business owners ought to have, but we both know that saving is just the first step of accumulating capital muscle to create more wealth. Saving at least 10% of your income has been a widely accepted financial truism, especially in personal finances, and the same could be translated into business. This may seem like a very insignificant amount of money to set aside every month or week, especially if your income is low, but the aim of saving is to invest them for the long term and thus should take time to build up. When it comes to your business's finance, consistency is key and building up a good habit pays off in the long run. The amount is not limited to just a tenth of what you earn and you can adjust it as you need be or as per your goals. One thing for sure is this money needs to be set aside before any spending is done. Money, however, is a moving forward flowing tool. Stagnating and staying under a mattress or stashed in an account will not grow your money. And those fixed deposit accounts that earn you less than the inflation rate are no good either. Saving should have a purpose, a goal, and savings should earn you interest. Now, that is investing. Whether it's money markets, the stock market, real estate, or commodities, money should be making more of itself. The goal is for you to celebrate the inhabit of seeing your money grow and then bring the diver of your growth. These same monies you set aside digital energy every month could be what you used to use expand, invest in research and development, or add to your marketing budget to increase revenues. All in all, you'll be setting up your business for tremendous success. 
3. Budget for Expenditure The importance of this cannot be overemphasized. After setting aside your savings, the remaining amount needs to be planned for. You'll be amazed at just how much money your business wastes if you sat down and budgeted for your money. The long-term goal of budgeting is to always cut down on unnecessary expenditure to increase your savings and later on your investments. To start you off, you can download any of the simple budgeting tools available on the Play Store and try and come up with a budget for the next two or so weeks. Even if you won't follow it to the letter, when you review it after those two weeks, you'll get some great insights onto what you can improve on in the long run. Number four, make thy gold multiply. Your gold in the sense is your savings and they need to earn you a silver, which is interest. Your savings should be invested somewhere that they can labor for you and make you passive income without you having to actively pursue those investment ventures. This is the whole concept of passive income. The long-term target is to make passive income greater than active income so that you can solely live off your passive income and use the active income for more investments. Look at money as a tool because that's what it is. Take advantage of the power of compound interest. Start leveraging your money and use less and less effort to produce more. Whether that means investing in dividend paying stocks or knowing which penny stocks to buy, you will benefit greatly by starting sooner than later. You need your money to grow and earn you more money. You need to start building income streams with your money. The goal is that your hard work up front can help you build passive income streams for the future or grow your business. Number five, guard thy gold. Your savings were hard earned, so let that sink in. Remember how you toiled for them. To build wealthy businesses, one needs to be willing to take risks. This doesn't mean uncalculated risks. It means weighing all the options and taking calculated risks when appropriate. There's a risk and then there's risky. Risk is an everyday occurrence. It is a probability of something you don't want to happen happening. Risky, on the other hand, is playing poker with your life or Russian roulette constantly with your life and finances. For example, the stock market has risks involved, but over the long term, history shows that it provides good returns on money that is invested wisely. Those who fear risk altogether end up saving money in accounts that likely lose money to inflation in the long run. Successful business owners don't gamble on big financial decisions. They do what they can to mitigate risk. They do their research and analysis and determine which options best suit their financial needs and business desires. They weigh the pros and cons and they take calculated risks. They make financial decisions by asking themselves, will this bring me closer to my business goals? They avoid risks that aren't going to benefit them. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that's changing quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. Number six, increase your ability to earn. Once you have the above tips all going for you, it's time to increase your earning potential. If it means adding your stock or opening a new business after careful evaluation of market demands, or even if it means increasing your skill set to earn higher, it's time to do that. Build up a work ethic that will see you increase your income constantly so you can save more, budget better, invest more, and live better eventually. We know some of us don't like schooling, but education and constant education is a prerequisite to running a successful business, even to the uneducated. Constant Skills Edition brings about knowledge that generally does two key things, show you what to do or who to do it for you. Getting ahead and building a successful business enterprise will require constant information gathering to enable easier and faster decision making. It is this ability that separates the rich and successful business owners from their counterparts. Reading books, attending seminars, going to networking events, having mentors or surefire ways of acquiring industry and market intelligence. Making better decisions starts with knowing better and growing your basket of success is highly dependent on the quality of decisions you make. Which of the mentioned strategies do you think is most important for your business? We would like to know. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.